this evening, I would like to share with you a little bit about my process and my work, and there'll be a quiz afterwards. <laughs> I'm kidding, no quizzes. Let's have fun and big smiles. Thank you, first of all, for all coming out this evening. We all appreciate it, and I hope you enjoy our presentations and our work. Uh, to start with, I began watercolor painting around 1993. Uh, I also paint in oils and acrylics, but watercolor is what gives me joy and fulfills my life. And it is a sassy medium. And by that I mean you can't control it. It's going to do what it wants to do. And you have to learn to work with it. And I find if I just put a few rules down, it tells me what to do. And I get the most stunning work by doing that. Uh, it's not the easiest to control but it is exhilarating, it's fresh, it's alive. I'm not as familiar with oil and acrylic. I keep going back to watercolor because it, it's, it's a lively medium. Um, when I prepare to paint, I am fairly traditional. I start out looking at the subject, I do a black and white sketch, and I call the initial steps kind of like dating. You're getting to know the painting like you're getting to know the person before you jump in and plunge to whatever that final step is. Um, I do a, there's a bug over here. <laughs> we have another captive member of the audience. Uh, I start out with a black and white sketch. It looks like it's friendly. Go, go, go. Don't fall, just go. All right, I start out with a black and white sketch. Um, and then I look at the subject matter I'm painting and I do color swatches where I mix all my colors myself. Uh, I don't use pre-mixed colors. I'll work with basically six to eight colors and create anything from that. Actually, I could do it with just three, but I get lazy and use about six to eight. And I do actually swatches, like when you go to the paint store and you look at the swatches of color you're going to paint on the wall, that's what I do on watercolor paper. And at that point, I decide, am I going to just go and run with it if it's a simple landscape or if it's a detailed painting? probably best if I do a study. So I actually do a detailed, smaller version of what I think the final version will be uh, as a study. Some of them end up being standalone paintings and I have a study and a final painting on exhibit over there. Some of them get put away for auction on eBay for a dollar. Yeah, <laughs> always share your art with everyone. Uh, and then I just start sketching on the larger sheet if it's a detailed painting, or just doing a very loose sketch if it's a landscape or an abstract. And I just begin painting. Now the trick with watercolor is it's not easy to correct. So I have to do this kind of pre-planning. And I actually like it because it keeps me fairly disciplined. And as, your hus as my husband will tell you, I like to be in control. So <laughs> I pre-plan as much as I can to get the finished product that I want. I follow basic principles. For the most part, though, my work is very intuitive. And one important aspect of what I do is I paint to music. And I, I cannot paint to silence. Even though the birds outside my studio seem to want to entertain me, I have to have that music. Um, my subject matter is very personal to me. It may not seem personal to those of you viewing it. You may say, gee, that's a nice stand of trees, not knowing that those are the trees on my family's property, the property I had to sell. Or, gee, that's a really lovely house, not knowing that that might have been the house of a client whose family member passed away there. Um, I only paint from my own photographs. I paint from memory. I don't take images off Pinterest or the internet. I somehow feel for me that's cheating because I can't put that essence of myself into the subject matter. I build on what I see and what I feel and what grabbed my imagination. The only time I'm very detailed on working from a photograph, because usually I use it as a suggestion or I edit it a lot, is when I do house commissions. I've been fortunate to do house portraits and building portraits for clients. And when you do something like that, it's very specific. You cannot fudge on it. And I've had people say, you need to put that bush in there because Aunt Sarah gave us that rose bush. I mean, it gets down to that. But what I try to do to make it personal and to put an essence of humanity in it, 
I talk a lot to the client or email. I find out what the history of the house is, who the family members were who lived there, what kind of memories they had, what time of year that this particular photograph was taken. If they want to change the time of year, what season do they prefer? Do you want it in spring? Do you want it in fall? And I get to know the client a lot. I've had people say, put that planter in there because I wanted my husband to buy that and he didn't get it. So, you know, you get to know the client and you just don't take something and copy it without learning about the person you're painting for. Uh, I think every artist has influencers, um, people that they look at and they admire. Um, I could say Monet and Van Gogh, but my primary focus is watercolor. So Winsler Homer, John Singer Sargent, Edward Hopper, Andrew Wyeth most definitely, and also uh, contemporary artist Dean Mitchell have been an influence to me or an artist that I truly admire. And you can never copy the people that you admire. You can only pull and learn from them. I wanted to touch a little bit on collecting watercolors. Uh, I've had people saying, oh, I can't possibly hang that in my house because it's too fragile. If you have anything on paper, if it's a print of something you like, if it's your child's high school diploma, that's on paper. Watercolor is not as delicate as people think it is. Uh, you wouldn't put your kid's high school diploma, unless you're not happy with your child, in the shower and have moisture get into that paper behind glass. Same basic principle with anything you have on paper and a watercolor original. Uh, decades ago, the pigment was more transient and was not as stable with, with chemical production and modern production. Pigments will last longer. Um, they're not as frail as they used to be. If you buying something from an artist, I personally use acid-free watercolor paper, which does not yellow or fox. A good artist will always use acid-free watercolor paper. If you buy something that's matted from the artist, go use acid-free mat. If, do not buy it if it does not have acid-free mat. Or if you're going to a framer, these are items you need to look at for your framing. Um, get UV glass that keeps the sun and light away from the original. Uh, don't hang it in direct sunlight. And please don't put it in the shower. Don't put it on the deck when it's raining. You know, treasure it like any piece of work you have. If you bought an oil painting, you would treasure it much and take good care of it also. I've had work hanging in restaurants, but it's behind glass and it, it holds up well. So don't be afraid to collect watercolor or works on paper. Uh, I've seen watercolors that have been created 100 years ago that still are vibrant just because they were taken care of. It doesn't have to be in a museum behind the curtain. It can hang easily in your house with a few steps. And in closing, I always like to encourage people to learn, to take up art. And watercolor to me is one of the easiest things that you can learn despite the fact you can't control it. But it's very, it's accommodating. It's transportable. It's budget friendly. It's an ecological um, medium. It uses water and it uses pigment. You don't need any other mediums to work with it. You can take it and pack it in your suitcase or your backpack if you're hiking out somewhere. It uh, doesn't have to be perfect. Don't always strive for perfection. Some of the beauty of watercolor is when it's less perfect. And you just put the color on with water and you let it all intermix and intermingle. Uh, I've used a lot of different avenues in studying. I, I started at, a, at an art center in Orlando for a couple of years. And then I ended up um, going and having private watercolor lessons. Uh, I joined a watercolor society where people gave demonstrations. Um, I painted with a group. And I've been doing this for, from 1993. That's a lot of years. Uh, but I don't stop. I always continue to learn. I, I try to get um, courses online. I follow a lot of things on YouTube. A lot, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube. Um, it's kind of tough to read through, but you might pick up a tip here and there. But the most important thing is I would sit and read the books and look at the videos. The most important thing is take that brush and put it to paper. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. The best artists out there really screw up. They have more that they throw out than they show. That is it. It's short and sweet.
I hope I didn't bore you too much. I hope I kept you interested. And I hope I encouraged some of you to try the medium. I wanted to thank the staff at the Quinn for this opportunity. And y'all passed the test, including the book. Thanks for your time.